Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2, our conquering light <laughs> uh, career, because there's, there's there's no uh, colony stuff, so it's got to be light. Uh, we're going to go to the mission control. Our mission today is to build a craft that can go to Duna, right? Our main primary objective is to investigate the signal on Duna. So that's what we're going to be tracking and, and following along with today. Uh, I'm going to track the Kyo Stationary Orbit one as well as the Fuel Station one uh, because I think both of these are fairly straightforward and easier to do. Uh, this one here, I'm not really like over the moon for or over the Mimis for, I guess. Wink, wink. Uh, it's only 35 science. It's really like, meh, I don't really care about that one. Um, if they were offering money and it was career mode, then fine. But this is not that much science and I don't care. The curb wide tour seems interesting. It is a pretty good amount of science, and uh, we probably could do this one, um, but it's not a primary objective. I think this is one of those things we'll do once we get the Duna craft in the air and on the way, right? Like once the Kerbals are on their way to Duna, because I'm going to send Kerbals to Duna, then um, then fine. We can spend some time in that transfer window doing this maybe, but I'm not going to bother tracking it for now. Okay, so Duna is the primary objective for this video. Let's go into the Research and Development Center. We're going to unlock a couple of nodes here that I think will help us in designing a really cool and uh, very simple but straightforward um, craft that can land on Duna. Normally, for the sake of being realistic, you would want to send probes first before sending people and all those types of things, and I probably will do that for the other bodies. But for Duna, it's a very straightforward thing. I've done it a lot of times. I've been there before. Uh, I'm just going to do a Kerbal mission there, and uh, we can always set up you know, if comms networks becomes necessary, we can we can do that, okay? So what we want to do here is expanded construction and uh, precise machining and landing utilities. I would love to get to heavy landings because that would give me the landing legs that I want to use, but we don't have enough collective science to get there. So we're going to have to design a vessel that can land uh, on this, uh, this planet here. It's got an atmosphere. Uh, it's also got higher gravity than the moon. And so... We, we need to be very careful with uh, with landing because we don't want to break parts. We have to come back, right? We have Kerbals, we have to come back. So expanded construction is what we're going to take. This doesn't really unlock many parts that we're going to use, although I will eventually use the radial attachment points. Uh, but none of these parts are really going to be used in this craft. It's mostly to unlock the next one, which is precision machining. This is going to give us the TVR 400L that I'm going to use today. It's going to give us a bunch of other stuff that I'll use eventually too. Like this uh, adapter plate is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, and then also, I like the multi-point connectors and stuff for the stations. So we'll get those. Uh, then we're going to go up to landing utilities. And this is going to give me uh, access to the telescoping ladder, as well as just some extra lights and stuff that I can put on the craft. Uh, okay, so medium payloads, enhanced coupling, and heavy landings. These are the things I'm probably going to go after next. I had a question about fuel lines. Uh, well, basically, somebody telling me that I need to do asparagus staging. First off, if you don't know what asparagus staging is... I guess just look it up. It's not something we do in the real world, right? It's just not something that's practical to do. But in this game, uh, decoupler, de all these radial decouplers and stuff have crossfeed. So you don't need fuel lines to transfer fuel from one tank to another, okay? It's not necessary. Uh, asparagus staging is one of those niche things that's nice to have, but totally not required. And you definitely don't need it to play the game. And um, yeah, fuel lines are, I think, uh, are gonna be useful later for certain things. Uh, like if you want to transfer fuel from uh, tanks that are not directly connected to each other via uh, decoupler, like maybe it's in a later stage kind of thing. Like you you, you have extra fuel in, in this stage and you want to move it up to the, the, the next stages later or something, then uh, that's good. But for just moving t uh, fuel around tanks that are directly connected to the center tank, like asparagus staging, you don't need that at all. Uh, so we're not going to bother with that. And then... Um, uh, there's also Xenon Propulsion as well, which is something that we'll look at far later. Uh, I would like to get a trip to Elu, which I think would be pretty cool. Uh, I don't know whether or not we're going to use this for it, though, because the thrust to weight ratio on the craft will be so bad. I'm not confident we could even get captured by Elu's really small gravity uh, because we need to slow ourselves down a lot if we're going to go out that way. So uh, Xenon may not be used. We'll see. Maybe maybe it's like a dual satellite network thing could be used for this. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, so we're down to 259 science now. We don't have a whole lot left. I could use it on some of these other things just for the future, like a monopropellant drives and things like that. But uh, until we really need these parts, like light aviation is probably something I'll have to get into uh, pretty soon here just for atmospheric science. 
so I might grab this but until we need that those parts I'm gonna just keep the science and only unlock things as we need them okay okay so the mission is Duna let's go to the VAB so for this I'm gonna send two Kerbals I've decided I'm sending two uh, again I would normally for realism's sake you would want to send probes first before you uh you send Kerbals on anything just because of the sake of uh telecommunications right you want to be able to keep a signal with things but if you have Kerbals on the mission you don't need a satellite network or anything you don't need relays to control the vessel that's the main thing to control the vessel so with this we're going to go down we're going to get the science we're going to bring it back all right so we're going to use the tuna can because i think the tuna can looks pretty cool this is going to have two Kerbals in it pick our pilots we have valentino let's uh valentino take a break uh let's use uh bob's gonna go on this one and we'll send uh danwig he looks interesting bob and danwig are gonna go uh gonna go off that way okay uh so first thing is first we need to just to establish the fact that we need to get back okay we need to come back let's go to the trip planner they come over to Duna. And we're going to say it's a round trip because we got to bring these Kerbals back. So the trip planner is going to say that we need 13,000 Delta V. This is wrong. We don't need this much. And the reason is because the trip planner will always assume that you are propulsively doing everything. It's not going to factor in parachutes in any case. So, for example, going down to the Duna surface, it's saying we need 1450. Uh, that's not right. We don't need that. Uh, we are going to be slowing down with the atmosphere and parachutes and all sorts of things. If we do do any propulsive landing at all, it'll be at the very last minute to, to slow us down to a safe landing speed. So like if we're falling at 12 meters per second or something, we'll fire the engines right at the last minute, get ourselves down to like six or five or so, and then land, right? It's, we're not going to need this. So we can re reduc reduce that from this, okay? We are going to need takeoff. So that's vital. We're going to need at least this much to take off to get orbit, right? All those types of things are going to be needed. But as we get back down to Kerbin, our entry and exit to Kerbin here, we're getting into low orbit and stuff. That stuff's not going to be necessary, right? We're using aero braking. Honestly, if we set things up correctly with our Duna exit, we kind of don't even need any Delta V. We'll just flow right into Kerbin's uh, atmosphere. And uh, maybe we have to go around a couple of times, but we will land safely, right? That's the idea. So we can deduct that as well. So I think if we can get to about 8K, Delta V instead of 13,000. I think 8K would be good. Maybe a little less than 8K would be okay. If for some reason we don't have enough, we can always do a rescue mission. <laughs> We're going to give them plenty of snacks. All right. So uh, I think the first thing to really look at here is how is this lander going to land? How is it going to... And this is the door they come out of. So we need to make sure we don't obstruct that. Uh, this is just a window they look at. But this is the front. Uh, well, it's saying this is the back. So this is the front, I guess. Uh but anyway, so we're going to say that they mostly look out of this. We're going to try to avoid blocking these two uh, when we set up things, okay? So I think the first thing to really look at is what's going to land, right? Is this too big of a, for of a tank to land with? Or do we do something more like this, right? Do we keep them? I think we're going to need plenty of fuel to lift off. So I'm kind of thinking this is where we want to be there. We're also going to want to land safely on Kerbin, and that's going to require a consideration of heat. So let's pop a heat shield on this thing. Uh, and real quick, does this have any type of reaction wheel system at all? It does. 12 kilonewtons of, of uh, reaction wheel built in. So we don't need any other types of reaction wheels on this to get a good uh, bit of control here. I think we're fine. Okay. So with this, we don't need this much ablator. I think I could probably get away with maybe point. F I mean, if we're coming in from Duna, so it's a lot farther away now, but I think we'd probably get away with like 0.48 or something. It's probably fine. We're not going to need all of it. Okay. So uh, uh, next thing to do here is to go in with our coupling. So let's go coupling go like this. And I think right after this, to get more control on this vessel as we're moving, as we're maneuvering through the atmosphere and stuff, um, it might be a good idea. Because this heat shield, by the way, is not going to help us on Duna. 
this heat shield's not going to be involved in Duna. All right. So we're going to this. That's purely for Kerbin. So in case you're wondering, I don't know if I have tons enough for two planets. You don't need it for two planets. I only need it for coming back to Kerbin. Um, I think probably what we'll do next is let's add the parachutes and stuff that we need on this. Uh, to mount those, I'm going to use an adapter. That's what I've been looking for here. I'm just not seeing it right here. We're going to put this adapter on top. This is going to give us a good surface for mounting things. And uh, what I'd like to do is we're going to put some parachutes on there. So why don't we get some radially mounted parachutes? We're going to put four of them on here. Right about like this ought to do it. Right near the top. About like that. Should be good. We're going to do another set right underneath that about here. Okay. Now, the reason we're doing two sets is because one of these sets are going to be used on Duna, possibly both sets, but we're going to have to be flexible with it. I don't want to deploy all parachutes. I only want to deploy half of them to see if we need more. So that's what we're going to do there. So we're going to need to uh, affect some staging here. We're going to need some of these parachutes to be in a different stage. So. We're going to say that the, uh, oh, we didn't, we didn't grab them all. I'm going to grab the whole, the whole thing, please. Oh, really? Come on now. There we go. Oh, now all eight are up there. Okay. Can I grab a group? Can you let me grab the entire group? Is that not possible? There it goes. Okay. It's a little weird, but all right, I'll take it. So the top ones here, they're going to go first. And these ones here are going to be used on Kerbin. All right. Ideally. These ones are going first. Uh, okay, next thing we're going to need is some drogue shoots. Because they can open much sooner, slow us down. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to pop two sets of drogue shoots. One there. And uh, that's the drogue shoots there. Yep. And then we're going to pop another set right below that here. And then we're going to want to do the same thing we did before by splitting them up. All right, so now we have these lower ones are matched up with the lower ones on the lander can, right? So these ones here are going to be used on Kerbin. And then we've got these drogue shoots and this one. And we're going to want to flip these. So the drogue shoots open first and then these. Uh, and then we're going to want to do the same thing on this side where the drogue shoots open first. There we go. So all the parachutes are now perfect, exactly the way they need to be. At the top of this, we're going to use the new MK25 drogue parachute oh, this is a drogue parachute i want the i want a bigger one it's a drogue parachute oh i don't have a bigger one like a normal parachute i don't think i do guys i think that's just a drogue shoot and that's it well i guess the good news is we have plenty of parachutes lots of redundancy right i suppose that's fine we'll try to avoid popping the big one unless we need to so we'll have that be dead last in the list all right if we need to pop the big one then we will but otherwise we'll keep that as like a just in case all right on our slowdowns probably will be manually deployed by clicking and, and hitting it uh okay so with that done i'm gonna put a stabilizer right underneath this and then pop this fuel can right here all right now again I don't, i'm not sure how much delta v this is really going to give me yet before we do this, I'm going to go into my structures and I want this adapter, small to medium quad adapter. I'm going to pop that right there. I think this is too tall. I don't think I need this much fuel. Um, let me try this one instead. I think this will be sufficient to put you off to the side. Uh, okay, so underneath here, I want some really efficient engines, and we're going to Duna. The atmosphere is very thin. Its gravity is not nearly what it is in Kerbin. There's a good chance we'll be able to use Terriers on this stage. It doesn't have a very good ISP in the atmosphere, though, and this is the at the atmosphere is where we need this to work because it needs to lift off of Duna and get out into space and then make the transfer. So we have to kind of uh play this a little bit like because we need a, a good balance of isp so right here we're getting 170 in atmosphere 335 in a vacuum it's very good in the vacuum very bad in the atmosphere we could get something like this instead though and um to be very good 280 in the atmosphere is very good and if we place these with our level four there we go if we, if we do something like this 
that gives us a little bit of a wider base for landing. All right. So we don't have to rely on one engine. We can land on just all of these swivels instead, which I think would be pretty good, right? If we take a look at the thrust to weight ratio, I'm going to switch it to Duna here and atmosphere. And we're going to have in atmosphere, it's saying the thrust to weight is 1479. I'm not sure I buy that, but what I'm definitely seeing is it doesn't have enough Delta V to actually lift off uh, and get out to uh to do the job it needs to do which is to get us away from duna later so uh i'm gonna swap this tank to the bigger one and we'll see what that does and uh that gives us 2550 i think that is good enough 2550 should be good enough to get us into orbit at least i i, I need it to of course get us to all the way to Kerbin though and i don't think that's enough so one thing i might want to try doing is I can add some extra tanks on those outsides. If we add extra tanks to the outside, uh, let's go with the decouplers. We actually make this a wide base. So we want the, the bigger ones. To make this a wider base, let's say something like this. All right. And we bring this lower. If we were to do something like this, move these to the outside and stick the terriers on the inside. Perhaps that, <laughs> it looks terrible though, doesn't it? <laughs> Perhaps that would do what we needed to do, right? We just need enough to just get us up. Boom, these get us out of uh, the atmosphere. There's more than enough thrust to weight ratio. Get us out of the atmosphere. We decouple these and then we're left with the super efficient engines to circularize our orbit and get us around Duna and then finally take us home, right? That's That's the idea. Um, have to switch these stages up a little bit though, to, to see what we're dealing with there. So it's just a rough, it's a rough thing, right? We're trying to just kind of figure out what we need and then take a look at what we've got and, and make tweaks and, and stuff the way we need it. So why don't we put these off to the side for now? We're just planning on using the terriers on this side because I think the terriers are going to be better. Like when we go to space, this is definitely going to be better for us. We, we need enough fuel to get home. So I'm going to use the terriers here. Uh, on this stage uh then on this side you might be thinking okay well you've got this uh you know you've got this uh four you know this two by two area here how are you gonna how are you gonna mount anything underneath it right well we're gonna go back to our structural stuff we're gonna grab another one of these things we're gonna grab the decouplers we're gonna take the decouplers and put them on the edge of each engine like that and then we're going to flip this over, get it out of symmetry mode. And we're just going to pop this like that. And that gets us a really clean transition from these four engines back to a single. I think that's great. Then we can go ahead and start piling on fuel on this side to get us to the stage that will transfer us uh, this is the stage that we're, we're designing right now is the stage that needs to circularize our orbit of Kerbin. So everything after this will be deorbited. This will circularize our orbit to like finalize it and transfer us to Duna as well as uh, get us captured on Duna, which we don't need a whole lot of fuel for because again, we can aero break. Um, and then with precision, we'll then be able to modify our, you know, how we're coming in. We want to be able to modify that and, and, you know, change our inclination so that we can get over top of the objective, right? The point that we're trying to land on. This is where we need to go. And that's what this stage is going to help us do. And then this one will be the landing stage. So this ends up deorbiting and, uh, you know, crashing into Duna and blowing up is what this will do. All right. So for that, we're going to want, uh, I think the Poodle is a good engine for this. Is going to be a good engine for this. And then on the uh, under, under that, let's see what we have uh, for Delta V here on this stage. We're at 2356. I think that's great. That's actually, I would say that's even perfect. 2356 is great. Uh, we then want to grab another decoupler on the bottom of that. And then finally, we're going to go in and get ourselves a mainsail. And I don't know exactly how much fuel we're going to need for that. I'm hoping that this is enough. Uh, that gets us just 1,000 meters per second. 
So we're going to need boosters plus this. I think maybe one more tank on this would, would work better. This main cell about there. All right. So it's a nice and tall rocket, right? It's good. Nice, tall rocket. Uh, and then finally, I think for here, let's borrow these because we're going to need them anyway. We're going to place, I think, six boosters on this. So probably about here. Yeah, six boosters on this. We're going to go these long, tall ones here. About there. And let's move them down to where the rocket is sitting on top of these. Because that will mean we don't need the clamps. We'll lower them down about there. And that way, when it's sitting on the pad, it's sitting on all six of the boosters. Instead of the mainsail. And that's going to be good. Here are dynamics. We're going to place the nose cones. There we go. We're getting some pink graphical things going on. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, still a question mark on this. I'm not sure about this yet. It's kind of a question mark for me. Uh, okay, so let's check the staging really quick. We've got uh, the the boosters here. Main cell will fire as well. We then need to decouple those. Is that not... Uh, hi. Yeah, you. Come on down here. Uh, right there. Okay, so we get the boosters, then the mainsail, then we decouple these, then we get rid of this, and we fire this. We could probably do that at the same time. I think that's probably fine. Fire these two things at the same time. And then this takes us all the way until we need to ditch it, and then, then we can ditch it with this. We fire this when we're far enough away, and at that point, we're good to go until it's time to start, uh, you know, opening up the parachutes and everything. So why don't we take a look at that? So with this stage, we're going to want to fire parachutes and stuff well before this. So one set of drogue shoots and one set of parachutes need to be before this. There we go. And then these parachutes are for Kerbin. These are for Kerbin. And this is an emergency. We need to do this, you know, situationally choose when to do it kind of thing. All right, I'm liking this. We're at 8,000 meters per second of Delta V. Now we're going to need electronics and stuff on this. So that changes things a little bit too. And we're just going to keep this off to the side because I might I might use it somehow. We'll see. Uh, so for this, uh, I want to fit this with a good amount of electronics as well. We need to transmit it is another important thing to keep in mind too. We need transmissions. And so I actually kind of want to switch this. Yes, I'm trying to avoid putting things in the way of the door i'd like my transmissions to go here i kind of want to rotate i'll probably rotate these parachutes i'm not entirely sure i need four do i need this many it is it is duna and we're coming in hot so yeah but you can't have it's fine a little bit there is not a big deal maybe i'll adjust it i don't know we'll see uh oh we are big enough now I think with the rocket that we could use a, a little bit of strut action, right? So uh, we're going to add some struts here to really increase the stability between these two stages about there would be good. And then we can strut the bottom part to about here to uh, about there. And that'll keep this really nice, nice and tight is great. Uh, okay. So I might change some things around here. We'll see. Um, I'm going to take and go with communications. We're going to take the satellites here and not satellites, the dishes, right? We're going to use these longer ones here. And I think they open that way. Good. Okay. So there's our, our dishes for transmitting, communicating, etc. Just kind of slamming up right against that. I think that works really well. Uh, and then we need solar and I'm thinking for solar, we're going to use these. These are deployable ones and we could do this many. I think six is a good number as long as we keep them away from that ladder. So we put them right about here. I think that's a good spot. Uh, alternatively, we could put them on the can itself and then we get to keep them for like ever and ever. Right? So maybe that's the better, maybe that's the better play. Uh, we can also add some batteries underneath those solar panels. So about here might work okay we do need some power storage 
One thing I wish the game did, and I don't know why they didn't do this, is in the engineer's report, it doesn't tell you anything about how much electric charge generation you have, how much battery capacity you have. You have so much room on this thing, man. I mean, look at how, like you, you open by default at this size, and yet you only show me that little bit of information. You could show me more. Show me everything in the engineer's report, man. There is no part of this interface where you can see how much electric charge you're generating, how much, you know, how much battery you're generating. You just have to count it in your head. There's no way to tell. No. Unless you want to go through the parts manager and be like, okay, electrical, I have one of these, uh, one of these, one of these, and then, oh, it doesn't tell you how much it generates. You have to go to the parts list to find that. You see what I'm saying? You, got, you can tell me a lot more in the engineer's report. I'm really sure you can. All right. I rearranged some things around just because I really wanted to. So uh, our solar panels are still operating over here, but their doors and stuff now go into an upside down battery in here. So it kind of like as they open, it will obviously the door is going to clip through. But I'd like to imagine that this is all one unit. So we're just going to pretend uh, that this is all one unit and that the door slides down into this little compartment is what it's going to look like. At least I hope that's what it looks like. Uh, but uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and put this back in. Here we go. Everything opens very slowly anyway when you get the space. Uh, okay, so uh, with all that done, we got the atmospheric stuff on the sides here. We are going to use this many parachutes. I've decided that's fine. And uh, we're here at, at 8,200 meters per second because I've now added... I decided we're going to go with eight boosters. And we've also added some control surfaces down here to uh, help us out with that too. Uh, and I eliminated the struts when I went ahead and redid that. So let's redo the struts as well. We're going to go down here and attach struts. Oh, goodness. This is, I mean, I know I don't have to place them precisely, but I like to, I like to place them precisely so that it looks good. And I'm not going to be able to do that very well. Oh, here we go. Maybe, maybe that will do it. It looks like it's the wrong engine. It's the wrong one, isn't it? Yeah, it is right there. Did I get that clean? Not good enough. <laughs> I just like to, to put it in a certain spot. Uh, and then we'll take the strut and go right here. Near the top of this right there to, let's say, there. And that'll keep all that stuff very, very tight. We have control surfaces at the bottom here. We're going to have a lot of control authority over this craft, I think, uh, in the atmosphere. I think it should be a very stable flight. Uh, okay, I've decided I'm not going to use the wide you know, put, like put extra boosters or put extra tanks and stuff over here with extra engines. I think we're going to be okay. If I look at the statistics on these uh, and I take a look at this stage here, which is right here. If we open up the details for that, it says that in atmosphere, right? It's all about atmosphere, right? It says in atmosphere, and I don't know if I can trust it, that we have a 3.0 thrust to weight ratio with these four poodles. Again, I don't know if I can trust that. That seems, that seems a little weird, but uh, we're going to go for it. And then if I change it to vacuum, it says 3.8, which again, I just doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think that's the case uh, with this. And I realize that these engines aren't very efficient in atmosphere uh, as well. So perhaps what we could do to counteract a little a bit of that, let's, let's counteract a little bit. We'll take these radial decouplers at the bottom here. We want to get uh, out of the way of the... Here, let's put this over here for a second and zoom up. Okay. Let's put this uh, not in the way of the doors. Let's keep this out of the way of the doors. We'll say right about here. Uh, looks like we're going to have to go six. Six is fine. We'll go six and put them down right about here. And uh, if we do this plus... Do we have like a really small boosters? If there's these radial ones, but they don't fire very much, they provide a little bit of thrust, but it's, it's like, it's very small. I was kind of hoping to, I don't know, get something different. These are too big, you know? I want like a smaller, uh, like an in-between, right? Between this size and this size. <laughs> there's got to be something <laughs> in between. But there isn't. Uh, unless I go over to my my tanks here and even then it's you know we don't have a good enough engine choices we do have hydrogen now but we're not going to use that uh 
Yeah, so I think maybe we'll just put a bunch of these solids on there. That's fine. So we'll put like eight of these solids here. And we'll put another set right next to it here. And we'll just fire all these solids when it goes when it comes time for us to leave. Duna. Right? We'll just fire all these. We're just gonna put them all around the craft and they all just boom, they all fire. And that will lift us off a little bit more. I don't know. It really doesn't do much for us, I don't think. Uh, but we'll try it out. Uh, so these little boosters, where do they end up putting them in the in the order here? Right here. Okay, um, that's not bad. I would like them to be separate, though, so I can only fire them situationally. So we'll put these down here. Yeah, there we go. And then uh, we actually want them to be probably after the parachutes, right? So parachutes, then these. Then we'll decouple all these. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. No problem. So I think we're almost ready to go here. It says we have 7,800 meters per second now. I guess the added the added weight up here is... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about landing off, picking up on Duna here, man. When we have better stuff, if we need to rescue these guys, again, we're going we're gonna to send them with a whole lot of snacks. So I'm sure they'll enjoy where they are. Uh, let's put some lights on this thing, huh? I think lights are the next step here for sure. Uh, we're going to put some lights. And honestly, I might move the solar panels lower just to put the lights on top of this a little differently. Or maybe we could put the lights here instead. We don't need lights when we come back to Kerbin, right? So maybe we put the lights there. Let's go with utility. And we'll have these little extra small lights. Yeah. Let's flip them over, face them lower. And we'll put the... Let's do four. Or should be plenty right underneath the batteries. Uh, oh, we did six. We do six on this. I guess we did six on the solar. Okay. Well, six lights for six solar panels. I think that's acceptable and they're kind of angled out a little bit. We should be able to have a really good view of where we're landing in the event that we have to land in the dark. Uh, we're also going to want the ladders. I'm going to place the ladder right underneath this one. Should be good. I think right about here would be fine. And uh, that comes down only about that far. So if I was going to do this, I would need to have another one maybe here. And then maybe one more right down here. So everybody can just climb right up, right? And I might think, well, I mean, you could just use your pack on Tuna. And yeah, you can. But I'm going for a little bit. I mean, not really, but a little bit of realism here, okay? Just a little bit. Let's give a, give our guys a ladder to climb up, okay? Uh, it looks like this ladder is probably not going to be able to transition to this one all that well. So I kind of want to place this a little closer to that if possible. Just scooch it up just a tad. That's good. So they'll have to jump up to this ladder. But once they're at this ladder, they'll be able to climb all the way up. And then let's line up let's line up the ladders. We're gonna go about like this. And I wanna just kind of bring that in a little bit so that it's kind of lining up with the other ladder. There we go. Yeah, so it's a little bit tighter to the craft now. I think that's probably pretty good. Uh okay, so we'll go ahead and close this up. And we'll close this one. There we go. And close this one. There we go. I think we have everything we need. Um, I've decided to move our... Uh, oh, did I even put... I don't think I put them back. Did I put them back? I didn't put them back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our satellites are actually right here. So I did do... Yeah, I don't want to do... I think, I think four was enough, right? I think four was was plenty at the time. So I'm trying to gauge like when we, when we transmit data, which we don't need to do. Um, these antennas right here, they will consume five electric charge while they're transmitting at 36 gigameters, right? And uh, we have two of them. So that's 10 electric charge. We don't really need 10. I think five is probably fine. I'm just using an extra one on the craft for redundancy's sake. And uh, so I went ahead and made, let's, uh, let's move this over to be like here. It doesn't look quite as good there, does it? 
I just don't want to get in the way of the solar panels. And now that we have these extra panels, they kind of have to be here, right? Well, we could put them on the bottom tank too, I guess. That wouldn't be half bad. It'd be fine. Yeah, we'll just put it on the bottom. Because you don't want it to interfere with those. Although it looks like it will fit here. I just don't know if it's all that flat. Yeah, I guess it's fine. That'll work for me. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll be fine. All right. We just don't want it to get in the way of the solar panels. All right. I think everything's good here. I'm, I'm just trying to like triple check my bases here. Why don't we do a test flight to see how it works? I'm pretty confident that the very bottom stage is going to be very stable. I'm very confident about that. Uh, we'll fire both of them at the same time. We don't need to stage it uh, separately with the mainsail just because I can throttle down anyway. And then uh, get rid of these. And then we get rid of that. Let's check in the staging really quick. These two things can fire at the same time. There we go. And then next after that is this. And then these can fire. And then we have the parachutes and stuff. So I think this will be okay. It's at 7,700. It's kind of cutting it close, to be honest. It changed my Kerbals. Interesting. Um, I did have to reload the game, so that's probably why. Um, if you saw a cut, that's why. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. We are going to do... Who was it? Danwig. Bob and Danwig. There we go. All right. I'm going to save this as Craft Duna 1 uh, in my Duna project. And let's give it a quick test flight just to see what it can do. Let's go up. I'm going to throttle down the mainsail because we don't need it. And uh, we just let the, the boosters take us up. We should have really good control authority over this because we're double dipping the reaction control system. Uh, the, yeah, we're double dipping on the momentum we get at the top here for those units. Plus we have control surfaces at the bottom that articulate and stuff. So. Again, a lot of control here for this. We're going to let the... Let the boosters do most of the work here in the lower end. And then when we get up to about here, I'm going to turn on the mainsail. We need to catch... We need to get our speed up here. So turn the mainsail on here. Let's get ourselves moving. I'm, I'm a little concerned about our apoapsis. This actually doesn't do as much as I thought it would. So I, might, I may need to turn the mainsail on faster. So let's get rid of these. We're going to rotate slightly just to kind of get them out of there. There we go. And we're good to go here. So now we're on the main sails, main sail only. We're still picking up speed. I think we have a pretty decent, yeah, we have a pretty, pretty decent angle here. Uh, I am noticing a little bit of a weirdness with control though. Uh, every time I try to move, it also rotates at the same time. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe these control surfaces here aren't, uh, I think they're not completely straight because it's also rotating my vessel as I turn, which is not a huge deal for now. In fact, as we get out of the atmosphere, it will, that will change anyway, but yeah, here we go. We can just hold this heading right here. I think that's great. Let's let the, uh, apoapsis get up to maybe 80 K. We want to turn and just face the horizon at this point. There we go. And we're right on our apoapsis now. Maybe just a little bit too too late on that burn. But it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is get us to the point where it can deorbit. And now we go ahead and get out from there. And then this stage circularizes us and transfers us to Duna. So I definitely waited too long with the mainsail. So it's a, a note to self. We need to burn a little bit longer with that mainsail. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, if my angle was good. I'm not sure. Maybe we can adjust that a little bit for the actual launch. You know, because we had a, a lot of control with those boosters. But we definitely need to start this burn sooner because, again, we're falling. We don't want to fall. And I think if I f just face prograde vector right now, we could really slam that periapsis hard. But we're going to start seeing our apoapsis climb. And that's happening 
not directly back behind us, but like more over there. So our Aboaps is going to start climbing behind us, if you will. And uh, that's going to make it very difficult for us to circularize. I'm going to have to actually basically, in order to circularize this, I'm going to have to point straight up. I'm going to have to take my nose and point it away from the surface to properly do this. So we have good orbital speed, but it's our, it's our angle that's bad. So I'm going to tilt this up. And this is basically how I'm going to have to to circularize this. I'm going to have to burn out this way. That will bring the apoapsis down while bringing the periapsis up. Yeah, I don't think I can do it fast enough, though. Yeah, I can't do it fast enough because we're going to fall back into the atmosphere before I can do that. So it's a little bit late, and we'll have to queue that up and, and be prepared for that uh, to do it a little bit faster when we do the actual launch. Yeah, definitely need that to be faster on the actual launch. So I'm pretty sure we're going to enter the atmosphere here. And uh, in that case, we would been go, we would go home and burn up, right? That's, that's how that would work. We would go home and burn up. Maybe not. Actually, it might be fine. It's, it's really inefficient, <laughs> but we did it. We did get to orbit. It's very inefficient, but we did get there. We're up. Our periapsis is up above 70, so it did work. It's just uh, the bad... It's very bad. Uh, we're down to 1,600 left. So that's indicative of our bad uh, orbit here, burning extra fuel to get orbit here. Uh, because of that, we'll have enough to transfer to Duna. You only need about, what, 1,200 or so? But we're not going to have enough to get fully captured by Duna and adjust our inclination. So we're going to have to do that ahead of time. But I would, I would like to have more fuel, is what I'm saying. I'd like to have more fuel in this stage when we actually do the flight. So I'm going to go back to the VAB. All right, so one thing we need to do before we can launch for real is we need to get Kerbin in the, you know, in, in the correct position relative to Duna to get there with the least amount of fuel possible, all right? Uh, so ideally, you're going to want to see Kerbin and Duna lined up appropriately to make this transfer cheaper. Uh, so to do that, we're going to zoom time ahead quite considerably fast here. And uh, we're just gonna have to wait for that, that proper period for this to happen. So we're gonna go up about there. I think this is pretty close to where we wanna be. We want Duna to be a little bit ahead of us, but uh, you know, not super ahead. You, know, you don't wanna line them up like this. So the idea is, you're going to go out around the sun faster than Duna is so that you'll you'll catch up to Duna, right? Because the more inside you are, the more revolutions you're going to make in the same amount of time. And uh, as you work your way out to where Duna is, you'll eventually get it to where Duna's tying you and you basically meet it. And you're going to meet with Duna over here. Okay, that's kind of where you want. So I think this is pretty close to where we want to be. Maybe it could be a little bit more Maybe a little bit less, but ultimately, I think this is relatively close to where we want to be. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go back to the vehicle assembly building. And our craft is loaded. Uh, I've taken the parachute off the top of this. That's 0.2 tons. I've just decided that that drogue chute wasn't really worth it. And uh, so I've lightened the load a little bit by 0.2 tons. Uh, I've also repositioned the boosters a little bit here. So they're just a little bit different lineup, or they line up a little differently. And then also the control surfaces at the bottom are... Uh, tweaked in their positioning just a little bit to hopefully get it to where they don't get uh, wrecked uh, as we go up. So we should have uh, a lot of control of this vessel just like we did last time. And the hope is anyway that that mainsail carries us a little bit further if I just tweak my angle just a little bit. Okay? So go back in here. I have to reset our Kerbals. Uh, so back to Bob, Danwig. You guys are the ones going to Duna. Let's go. Launching our... Our babies, they're all going to the big red planet now. Okay. So it says we could do research, of course, and that's just that atmospheric thing, but I think landed, it's kind of already done. All right, environmental samples. I don't think it's actually doing the atmosphere thing. So does it do... I guess you have to be actually lifted off. So maybe I can do this experiment once we lift off. I think that's how that is. So we're going to start with the mainsail up at 100 and then dial it down. Here we go. 
And lift off. And now we can do the atmospheric survey. So we can run this. It's two minutes. That's uh that's a long experiment. I didn't realize it needed to run for two minutes. Hope it uh hope it finishes before we leave. <laughs> hope it finishes before we leave the atmosphere. Because otherwise we're just gonna have to run it twice, I guess. This is the atmosphere over Kerbin's water. We can also we also pause the survey, I suppose, too. Get it on the way back, right? But all right, that's good. So that's running. I don't know again if it's gonna finish in time, but that's running anyway. And uh, we want these. I'm gonna turn the mainsail on just a little bit here to try to get this up even higher. Use these boosters as much as we can here, just pushing us further and further. There we go. Come on now. Get us over. And uh, I think we'll leave the mainsail on now. And so we're gonna just get rid of the boosters. Hopefully they don't hit my wings. Looks like we're, doing, we're pretty good there. Looks like we're pretty good, yep. And uh, we proceed. Now, of course, again, this stage does not have enough Delta V to get us completely to orbit, but it's gonna do most of the work for us. The other stage picking up the slack. So let's get us lined up here a little bit better. And we wanna turn ourselves basically facing the we basically want to face the uh, the horizon here. Just get ourselves facing this way now. Here we go. And we're just going to let it go. Now, our apolapsis is already at 70-something, right? We're already going to be in space. But remember last time how we waited too long and we started falling. I'd like to get myself a little bit of extra leeway there. So I'm going to go up to about 80k like I did last time. And uh, we could actually do this, I think, just a little bit more gradual. If we slow this down, maybe go down to like this much. Just a little small burn here. We could keep hitting this without burning entirely all of this fuel in atmosphere. Let the mainsail do a little bit of stuff uh, out of the atmosphere. As long as this time to apoapsis is steadily dropping, I think I'm all right with that. And I don't think the atmospheric survey finished. <laughs> yeah, left valid region. So I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, maybe we can get it on the way back. I, I think certainly we have more time to get it on the way back. I would think we have more time. So 47 seconds now, and let's go ahead and, again, we're just facing the horizon here. We're going to go ahead and hit this. I need to do it a little earlier than I did it last time, because, again, we were a little late last time. And now we are... This stage is depleted. Still a lot more to go here, but this one's more capable. Or at least more efficient. It's not less, it's less capable, but it's more efficient. All right. And our timing on this is more efficient as well. So uh, we uh, we don't have to, you know, burn upwards here to, to kind of correct it. Our timing is better here. We should be able to see a lot more efficiency out of this. I'm hoping we have more Delta V remaining, more than 1,600. Last time it was about 1600, I think, right? So I'm hoping we have more than that. It does look like, though, we are going to hit Apoapsis sooner than I want. Man, oh man, this is just not enough. Not enough push. You know, we need more push. We are starting to drop now. Let's see if we did any better. We are dropping. T tip the nose up just a little bit here. Not, not a lot. Just a little bit. Just enough to where our altitude's falling slower than it was before. There we go. I'm not concerned about making orbit. That's never a concern. We're, we're going to make it easily. But the, the trick is, can we make orbit... Um, with enough fuel left to do what we want to do, right? 
because I'm kind of, I don't, I don't say I'm, oh, I'm trying not to over engineer things. I'm trying to engineer them as if we had to pay money for it, right? That's, that's the hope anyway. Doing this as if money is involved. So we're going to get through this. Um, again, we want to ho I'm hoping that we see more than 1,600 meters per second here left over. That's looking pretty tight. We might have done a little bit there. But I don't think there's anything I can really attribute to. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be tight again. Yeah, I'm going to have to lift this up. So we're going to lift it up like this. It'll push periaps up a little bit higher. There we go. Get it up there. And we're going to do it, but it's just not, it's not great, but we did it. It's 1691. So like I got extra, an extra 90 meters per second ish is not that bad. It's the difference there though, I think is probably just the fact that I didn't have the parachute. So it's roughly, it's, it's smoother than the last time, I guess, you know, we have a lower, uh, yeah, everything's lower. So we're going to want to burn here on the dark side of Kerbin because we want to go higher i guess relative to other planets we want to extend the orbit away from the sun so we will burn on the dark side to get further away from the sun and uh we want to set our target to be duna so let's go ahead and do that and we can zoom right in here and let's go ahead and plan a maneuver that burns that far we'll zoom out and we want to see where do we intersect duna all right, so there's one A and one B right there. So if we can get this to just, I, I hate this maneuver tool. I really wish they would have taken the time to make a better maneuver tool because it's just, you didn't have to recycle the one from Kerbal Cur Space Program 1. Kerbal Space Program 1 wasn't a good, it wasn't a good tool. You didn't have to recycle that one, right? You could have done this. You could have done it better. All right, I feel like you could have done it better. All right, this is going to get us a maneuver that intersects with with duna and that's 1307 it's not great i would have preferred it to be to zoom in to grab that stupid thing again um i would have preferred this to be definitely less fuel um if i can somehow get this to be less fuel i would love that can i go maybe starting back here come on Meet up with it. Get that. Maybe come out a little bit. Oh, okay. So 1265 is much better. And we'll focus that. See where we are. Okay. I mean, it's not great, right? We need to get a lot closer than that. But we can make adjustments. As long as we can meet up with it, we're good. Um, obviously, the sooner we make those adjustments, the better. Let's go in and... Uh, get ourselves facing towards the maneuver anyway. It's going to happen in eight minutes. It is a four and a half minute burn happening in eight minutes. And uh, I still want to tweak this ever so slightly if I can. So let's just focus. Do not grab that stupid maneuver note again. And uh, let's tweak this just a little bit here. We're going to want to uh, go down just a tad. I think maybe we, we do this later, right? It's probably way cheaper to do it later. Although we're using Kerbin. Yeah, let's... Okay, you know what? I'm going to do this later. Because burning in this direction... Now, well, it looks like... Ju or just change the angle slightly and we won't have to do as much. Maybe that's all right. Yeah, just a slight angle change makes a world of difference here it gets us really close to duna here on this side and i like that angle too because it's the point we need is up here so i kind of like that approach angle too i'm gonna leave this so it's 1266 i like that so we're burning basically well it's on the other side so we're burning on the dark side so this is uh pointed where we need it to be let's go ahead and zoom to the maneuver node where our burn needs to begin. Our music begins. Are you ready, Bob? 
Danwig, you crazy haired monster. You ready to go? 20 seconds. And then of course we'll need to, you know, I'm gonna use the, the map screen for a little bit of this. Get a little fine tuned control here, right? Uh, we could have actually saved ourselves a little bit of fuel, I think, if we would have launched during the night. That way our apoapsis would have been, um, our extended apoapsis, like, you know, if, if we messed up our burn or whatever, it would have ended up being on the light side, which is where we needed it to be anyway, right? It's beautiful. Did a really good job on the plumes. I'm loving that. Looks really cool. All right, so now we need to go. We're going to take a look at the map screen. Focus on the map screen. And uh, when this burn is, you know, 10 seconds left or whatever, we'll start seeing our blue line enter this area, and then I can fine-tune it from there. So I'll see you guys when this is done. It's four and a half minutes, four-minute burn, so I'll see you guys when it's done. So 10 seconds to go. Nine, eight, and Start dialing it back here really quick because I have a feeling it's going to hit really quickly. There it is. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> See, it's going to hit really quickly, right? Uh, so now we uh, we want to fine tune this anyway. So we're at uh, uh, 430 meters per second remaining on this. Now remember, we're going to use Duna's atmosphere to slow ourselves down and get caught. So this 430 is going to be used to deorbit us in Duna, right? Deorbit and then also to like fine tune the uh uh the inclination so that we can get it lined up over here right so what we're going to want to do at this point since we're leaving Kerbin, bye bye Kerbin. We're, we're leaving Kerbin now and go out like this we don't want to do this while we're in Kerbin's sphere of influence we're going to be uh, getting pulled in different directions and stuff so we're just going to basically leave Kerbin behind and for the first time ever kerbals will leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. Huh? Be out in the solar orbit with Kerbals for the first time. It's crazy. It's only video eight. We're doing that. Or I guess it's probably video nine by now. I'm, I don't know. I'm trying to trying to do this to where they're uh, all one video, but it just takes a while to design things. And I know you guys like that. You guys like it when I slow down and take the time to show you the different builds and stuff that I'm working on. So I, I mean, I could do this offline and then just... Uh, show you the changes later but I feel like I felt like maybe you guys wanted it to be a different way so dial this back there's our encounter so we just burned basically a little bit too far is what we did there so let's grab that and then we're going to come over here and what we want to do is just tweak this ever so slightly to bring it closer to Duna okay I have to figure out how the hell to grab that thing while I'm looking at it. I want precise maneuver. The mod from KSP1. It's so good. And I, I want it. I want it back. All right. So that's going to get us in a polar orbit, which is what we want. This is the angle we're looking for, right? We really want this. But we want to be closer. We want to be in the atmosphere. So we're just going to tweak this ever so slightly bring that down even further. Duna's PE is now at 87 kilometers. And then now it's bringing us directly in atmosphere, which is not quite what we're looking for. So let's back this off a tad. Now it's got to go this way. There. And that's at 54, which is not in atmosphere yet. So we're just going to go a little bit more. Oh, come on now. 44 is good. 38 is really good. I want 38. All right. That's what we're looking for is right there. All right. Now, ideally coming up here, right, would still be good. Having more polar, more polar would still be good. So if we can maybe get away with bringing that up a little bit more and then bringing it in. Oops, other way from there 
we can get away with that, that'd be even better. That's a 28 kilometer periaps. Whew, that's low. I don't know if I, I don't know if I like how low that is. Let's bring it up a little bit. Yeah, right about here. 33. I mean, Duna's atmosphere is really thin, and it's. I think it starts at 50, 54. I forget where it is. So 33 is actually fairly deep in, but it's also a very thin atmosphere. So we're gonna need a lot of help for it to slow us down, and that's that's why we're doing it this way. So I'm thinking 33 is okay. We're gonna we're gonna aim for 33 right here, and then the rest of it we'll try to burn off. We're gonna get most of our inclination corrections correct here uh, just by approaching from this angle, and then we can just wait for the right timing to hit that that marker there. So um, I think that's where we want to be. And as you can see, this tiny correction, if you're not familiar with the game, because we're so far away, doing your corrections, doing little burns, you save so much fuel doing that really far away. Because at grand scale on long distance travel, the tiniest of movements have huge impacts at your destination. So this change that we're about to make is just three, three meters per second of Delta V. It's nothing. It's not going to cost us anything. So we're just going to zoom up to that point. And I could have done it a little earlier, but it's just, this is just where I arbitrarily clicked. It's far enough away for it to, to not really matter all that much. And as long as we're pointing exactly where we need to be, the, the timing on this three meters per second is, is really inconsequential. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at Duna one more time zoom in we're mostly going to ignore the burn timer and we're just going to go this ever so slightly ever so slightly very very small correction here right very small corrections here whoops a little bit too far there uh we could we could back up and face the other direction now if we want to uh that would be the prograde direction yeah pretty much face prograde uh currently our duna periapsis is 24 which is still pretty good and honestly because duna is rotating this still would work uh and in fact if we brought this over and we tried to land uh here if we wanted to land in the daytime this would actually be the right angle to do that in um because uh, by the time it gets over there the day day the direction of day is going to shift right and we're going to end up having day over here so this might actually be the better call just letting it come in here at 24 kilometers periapsis is uh again pretty aggressive but it's a uh, very thin atmosphere i think we're going to need to be a little aggressive in order to to do this correctly so we're going to bring it in at 24 i think is probably pretty good here and so uh, I don't need to correct anything. I don't need to do anything. Uh, all I need to do is just hold steady, I guess, from where we are and make sure that my solar panels have a good look at the sun, right? So we can have, uh, this is Kerbal High Orbit Science. If I take a look at my science. I don't really have much to do here, but we can. Oh, this is really dark in there, isn't it? Can I turn the lights on? Uh, we don't have any pictures for these guys. Bob. What's going on, Bob? There you go. Uh, wow. I'm going to change in, uh, really flinging the whole ship around, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we're going to go ahead and let go. And you can run your invalid location for a, really, for a crew observation. Really? In orbit of Kerbal, is this, this is out this far is invalid location for a for research. Wow, never would have guessed. Yeah, flight in progress. I know. Yeah, what's going on there? It's interesting that we don't have any science to do high above Kerbal. No Kerbal like observation science of any kind. That's really kind of wild. I think that was going to happen. Uh, inside here, we want to do. Uh, we can do crew light enable, but that doesn't really matter, I guess. Yeah, there's just no observation status available for Kerbal Orbit. Huh. Okay. Well, anyway, we're on our way to Duna. So uh, that's that. That's our flight. <laughs> Hope you guys have enjoyed that. Uh, I know it wasn't much flying, this this video, but uh, we did get really far away from Kerbin. 
Yeah, and we're on our way to Duna. So that'll be uh, the next video. I think we're going to try to get... Let's go back to our mission control here really quick. I'll show you the next video. Uh, we're going to try to see about this curb-wide tour. The Cappy Rock. So we'll try this. Uh, we're also, I think, going to go ahead and see about getting uh, Kerbo Stationary Orbit done. And then also the fuel stations. We'll do these three things while the Kerbals are on their way to Duna. Okay? Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.